I'm going to be giving you a, uh, a sort of a breakneck tour through this uh, series of histories of visual language and new pattern languages that are starting to bubble up. Uh, there is a renaissance. It's been going on for quite some time. And right now, we're looking at a convergence of uh, a visualization renaissance, a design-driven renaissance that is um, leading us toward something that I like to call a whole systems macroscope. We're going to be focusing most of the day on the local environment. So I want to take us to the highest places that we can go so that we can look at the Gaia sphere, that we can look at the sociosphere, that we can look at ourselves the way that Bucky saw the planetary citizen of the future, which is now. We are information harvesters and local problem solvers. And we are actually finding out we're a tiny part of the tree of life. We're a tiny part of everything in the world, which is moving um, at a rapid pace to create a, a new kind of homeostasis for Earth. And that's why we're experiencing uh, volcanoes erupting all along the Pacific Rim. We're seeing these huge earthquakes. And we're thinking, oh, what are we, what are we going to do? How does it affect humans? Well, the bottom line is that Earth has always been here. Earth goes through these machinations, uh, if you will. And um, we need to very quickly, every single one of us, rise to the occasion of figuring out how to be stewards. Stewards like the phytoplankton of the seas that takes care of lowering sea surface temperature when it's too high, microorganisms uh, that are in slime, that are changing the way that the, the, uh, the earth is able to um, keep this delicate balance going. And humans really have to educate ourselves very fast. So how are we going to do that? Well, E.O. Wilson uh, talks about how we are drowning in information and starving for wisdom. So I want to start with a call for wisdom. Mine is a call for wisdom and action. But wisdom first. Let's put that on the very first place of, of, uh, before we do anything. Uh, the world will henceforth be run by synthesizers in this big collective, uh, this time of collective, connective, distributed intelligence of social media, of uh, crowdsourcing and open source information and uh, collective activism, activism, we need and we are continually synthesizing information. And how do we do that? How do we see that? What are the mirrors that tell ourselves who we are, that tell ourselves what we look like in the sociosphere? Well, visualization is the tool. Knowledge is collaborative by nature. Data is the key. How do we connect, synthesize, and act on that data? Visualization is really a language. And wisdom of crowds or crowdsourcing, which in 2006 Jeffrey Howe had uh, emphasized, but many people were already crowdsourcing. Uh, the SETI project was an excellent example of crowdsourcing, where you're actually engaging the activities of thousands and thousands of people toward the same goals and the same ends. I'm going to start um, with a little bit of visualizing abstract things, what we call data visualization or information uh, visualization tools. What do they do? They help us revision our collective history. We can see new relationships between things, people, ideas, and knowledge. All of these things require a, a, a kind of a symphony of visualization. So we see how everything, the perturbations within a system, we see ourselves as a dynamical system. And we see how we fit into the larger whole. We need to be able to move across scale and dimension like we can do with Google Earth, where we move in and out from a local to global. We need to toggle like our 15-year-olds are toggling through time and space when they're playing Assassin's Creed and they're going through a DNA spiral timeline to get to different times in Florence. Uh, we need to look at information from multiple points of view and toggle between these views. So I'm going to start with data visualization. Uh, self-reflexive data visualization, you know, pie charts and tables and, wait a second, this is not data visualization. <laughs> I think this is our grandma's data visualization. <laughs> There's something really missing here. So what I think we've got to start with is not the visualization. 
we've got to start with something very ancient. It's called the aesthetics of beauty. And in the 13th century, St. Thomas Aquinas had put forth some ideas for the aesthetics of beauty. And I'm going to draw from those aesthetics and apply them to visualizing the connective mind. The first one is integritas. And Buckminster Fuller talked about integrity and how integrity is going to count. There will be a time that will come when only integrity is going to count. Individual integrity. But integritas is this understanding of the whole, a completeness, a realization of perfection. The essential soul of the thing, the moment when it transcends mere representation. So just remember, our representations of information and data, our representations of earth, are capturing the soul and the spirit of what they contain. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Like Mr. Fuller talked about that as synergy. You bring things together. When people come together, something bigger happens that could never have happened if they hadn't come together. It's in between us, this thing. And what image comes to mind that would capture integritas, the notion of integritas? Well, the first time we looked back at Earth, the blue marble in space, when we looked at ourselves for the first time, what a mirror of integritas was that. We didn't go to the moon to explore new places we hadn't been before. We went to the moon to go far enough away to look at ourselves for the first time. That was huge. Next part of this aesthetics of the connective mind, claritas. The radiance or splendor, the unique and present essence of the thing itself. It's the pleasure and truth of each, each aspect and the universal qualities of the whole. So we strive to create something that really captures the universals. And this is an ancient understanding. The macro and the micro. The macro reflects the micro at every scale. The quality that allows beauty to illuminate the beholder, where intellect and intuition converge in its encounter. And this is just a visualization um, from uh, 2007 by uh, Kevin Boyack and Dick Clavins, who were some of the first to start looking at and creating knowledge domain visualizations and looking at the sciences through citations networks and creating using 820,000 citations, looking at the cross fertilization of different kinds of sciences so that they could see emergent paradigms in science. And as we're looking at this, we're looking at the way that scholars uh, reflect their own work through other people's work. So we're, we're looking as the, uh, at also as the emergence, this dynamical emergence of, uh, of a collective mind, of a connective mind, of something that is much more cross-fertilized than we ever think. We don't have a lot of separate sciences. All the time we are connecting our sciences together. And this looks a little bit like a biological metaphor. So these new visualization metaphors are coming when we even look at abstract space. The first structure of science map that Kevin had worked on uh, that had 800,000 scientific papers published in 2002, um, he wanted to see which areas overlap. And what you see here, if you can even see the dots there, this is a little dark, was very much like looking out into the cosmos. And now that we go further and further out into the cosmos, we find all those little dots are actually galaxies. <laughs> and in every galaxy is more and more. So this was a little bit difficult as a visual metaphor, but it was appropriate because it was really a universe of knowledge. Other data visualization people, such as uh, Moritz Steffener using uh, eigenfactor metrics, uses a technique called budge, uh, edge bundling hierarchical technique. Um, and he's capturing the flows of this through four different um, science uh, journals. And what you're looking at is the flows of the relationships. Um, so we, th we can think of knowledge as having a shape and having collective and collaborative knowledge as having, uh, having a shape, having flows, having dynamics. Uh, and that is claritas. Uh, Conantia, uh, proportion and harmony. Everybody in here understands that the golden mean and the divine proportion, uh, all the parts come together in a unified way. One part mirrors and reflects the whole. Um, there are, these have been applied by architects, stonemasons, artists, musicians, designers, 
ever since the most ancient of times. And what we find is our brains actually respond to this kind of beauty. And Bucky said, I don't think of beauty when I'm designing. He's using nature's technology as a way to you know, do design in, a, in, in, in trying to mimic nature, uh, much like what uh, we now call biomimicry. Uh, Janine Benyus uh, has really um, you know, moved us forward into thinking that way. Uh, but he said, but if it's beautiful, I know it's right. And beauty is huge. Beauty in itself is the language. This is uh, a very beautiful, I call it the illuminated Bible. The Bible has been uh, visualized by many, many people. Uh, Chris Harrison, who works with Microsoft uh, a number of years ago, visualized uh, the scriptures in the Bible and as you can go to the concordance in a Bible and see what stories and people are linked to each other, starting to look at the arcs of these. The arcs are of different colors that carry different weight of, of relationship. And then on the bottom, you see the lengths that represent the length of the scriptures themselves. So very quickly, you can get an, a, an image, a beautiful image of an illuminated Bible. Now, another pro project was done by Kati Brenner, Bruce Hare, Todd Holloway, Alicia Hardy and Kevin at University of Indiana with a Wikipedia dump um, uh, in 2007. Now, Wikipedia, Creative Commons, allows us to upload our understandings, what we know, and share this information freely. And we ask the question, uh, how do we look at the, how science and technology and math might be represented in this collective knowledge that is called Wikipedia in 2007? And they created a metric system using, uh, using circles. The metrics were by size and by color. And to see how they overlap, every single picture on here represents 300 different um, entries that are related in Wikipedia. And then you can start to see that swath of science and technology and math activity um, and how that is interrelated. This is consonantia, seeing the parts in the whole, being able to look at the whole and see relationships between the parts. The other thing that um, a, Ben Schneiderman, one of the fathers of uh, visualization, information visualization in 1991, had created tree maps, a tree map structure where very quickly you can get um, through proportionality, you can start to see the relationships between something, for instance, back in the Usenet in 2004 with Usenet um, groups, 250 million users were mapped with a tree map. When you do a node map, like I was showing you earlier, it could become a big mass or a bulk. But using a tree map, you can start to see differences in what's important, what's really at the top. Um, and you can see it at a glance. And, all, and the proportionality of everything and the color coding of everything is telling you. So let's just look at yesterday's news right here. Uh, there's a news map online, interactive. This is, this is data visualization at its best and at its simplest. Uh, disrupted air travel in northern Europe, third full day. European disruption worsens. Up here, the red is world information. The blue is sports. The um, purple is entertainment. So you can, at a glance, uh, pop down to exactly what you want to read. Same thing with smart money, another dynamic visualization that enables us to look at the market and what's going up and what's going down. And that looked pretty strange um, last year. Um.